And these are the prices on them? Yes, sir. Most weekends, Peyton Johnson can be found at gun shows like this one. Uh, these come with an AR grip. So you he says it's a way to supplement the income of his family's small gun shop outside of San Antonio. How many guns are you selling a year? This year, it depends on the year. With election coming up, it should be pretty high. Payton is one of about 80,000 licensed firearm dealers in the U.S. and is already required to run a background check on every buyer. But a new federal rule change expands the definition of who qualifies as a dealer to include anyone who sells a firearm for a profit, closing a loophole that has allowed unlicensed dealers to sell guns without background checks at gun shows and online. I think the good part about this is it's going to stop the people who can't buy firearms from coming through the door. Uh, we spend so much time with people who, who, who can't get approved for a firearm just to find out that that was a big waste of time. Payton says roughly 20% of the background checks he runs come back rejected. Proof, gun control advocates say, that background checks can help keep guns out of the hands of dangerous people. It's always been a hard no. But, but gun show organizer Darwin Bedeker isn't convinced that a piece of paper, one that someone can lie on, will stop a person who wants a gun from getting it. Not one of these guns have jumped off a table, ran down the street and shot somebody. We got to start addressing the real problem. Instead of sending eight or ten billion dollars to Ukraine, let's build some mental health facilities here in the United States. The research on the effectiveness of background checks is mixed. A report by the Rand Corporation last year found their impact on mass shootings is inconclusive, while other studies show that states with background check laws already on the books have a 10% lower homicide rate. They work if they're enforced. Devin Hughes is the founder of GVpedia, a nonprofit focused on gun violence prevention research. He believes the rule change is a step in the right direction, but he's worried about loopholes, like guns that are bartered, transferred, given as gifts, or sold as homemade kits, known as ghost guns. Law enforcement says there's been a thousand percent increase in these guns being recovered from crime scenes since 2017. Enforcement is going to be relatively challenging. I think it really depends on how much individual states help out with it, um, because local states um, are going to have more resources than the ATF. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, which oversees gun sales in America, has a notoriously small budget, a third the size of major city police departments like the NYPD. And gun-friendly states have already indicated they won't be helping out. 26 Republican attorneys general, including the one here in Texas, have filed a lawsuit to block the rule change from taking effect, arguing that the ATF is violating the constitutional right to keep and bear arms. Legal experts say it could be a hard sell to the courts since the rule change is part of a law passed by Congress. Blocking the new rule won't sit well with Americans either, the vast majority of whom support universal background checks. And in an election year when gun violence is top of mind for voters, the issue could partly determine who is sitting in the White House next year. Tony Waterman, CNA, Austin, Texas.